Let's go with the retinal detachment. What is going to be the history here when the patient is uh, saying retinal detachment? I mean, we are getting a patient, we think it's a retinal detachment. Patient might be saying it's a blurring of vision. Patient might be saying it's a blurring of vision, vision loss, again, the floaters. One thing the patient will say, see, we are FY2, we are intern. So they will be giving clear history to us most of the times. So, doctor, I've got a loss of vision and I, I, I feel that blurring of vision. I've got curtain falling. Sudden loss, curtain falling. Curtain falling is equal to a retinal detachment, right? That's what you need to know. Retinal detachment, yeah? <clears throat> uh, so uh, 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 what we need to do here is... Uh, Vision loss, so mainly is a curtain falling that I'm looking for. Patient might have blurring of uh, uh, vision, yeah. So what you need to do, you need to rule out some uh, differentials there. Uh, mainly the differentials that you can rule out is as it is like curtain falling, so macular degeneration that you can keep as your differential, central loss of uh, vision, central vision loss, and the wavy lines. Patient will see some wavy lines. That is going to be very important. Uh, sometimes, you know, retinal detachment, curtain falling, migraine. Sometimes migraine patient also they might experience. So migraine, you can ask headache, photophobia. Uh, acute angle closure glaucoma, that's something that you can ask. Yes, definitely a trauma history also uh, that you can uh, take. That's for sure. Right. <clears throat> uh, what else? You can ask about any... Uh, uh, then you have to go for uh, uh, what I would say risk factors. So once you have... Uh, uh, done your presenting complaint, you have ruled, you have asked for uh, uh, associated symptoms and you have ruled out some important differentials and risk factors. Smoking is a risk factor. Family history, that is uh, uh, really, really important. Post-surgery is very common. Patient had a surgery, surgery for cataract. After that, they might have this retinal detachment, right? And trauma history is also very important, right? Yes, if the patient is having high myopia as well, that could be the reason of retinal detachment as well, right? So in, in retinal detachment, what's gonna, uh, what is gonna, you see, it's gonna be like, suddenly you'll have this vision loss and curtain falling like feeling. That's what you will see. So can be a reason is the trauma, can be surgery after surgery, family history is there. Uh, that is something that you will see, right? Uh, what you need to do is uh, fundoscopy, visual acuity, you will be checking. That is going to be uh, really important. So full blood count, ultrasound, and the scan. That is what you have to do for the investigation, right? So when you get retinal detachment, and you know why we have got a gap in between the surgery for cataract? Because we may want to make sure like there is no such problem like retinal detachment, for example. So what you have to do if the patient is having retinal detachment, so it's going to be uh, immediate referral, right? So patient should be uh, in the in the hospital. That's the main thing, right? What is the treatment? So treatment depends. I mean, if the patient is having pain, we can go for painkiller as well. But otherwise, what is the treatment? The treatment is uh, surgery. See, retinal detachment, retinal tear, what you need to do, you need to repair it. And there are lots of different, different ways it can be done. I mean, laser treatment is there, cryotherapy is there. Sometimes, you know, uh, we actually do it with the bubble gas as well. Remember one thing. Uh, uh, Sometimes, you know, we repair it with the bubble gas because whatever the tearing part, you need to fix it at the back. So if you are fixing it is with the laser, it's a different thing. You're doing cryotherapy, it's a different thing. Sometimes it is done with the bubble gas as well. If that is the case, we actually tell the patient not to take any uh, flight as well because pressure is going to be different and can create some problem with that. If it is done with the laser or cryotherapy, uh, that is uh, absolutely, absolutely okay, right? So the treatment is just the surgery. You need to... Uh, fix the retinal tear. There is nothing else that you can do there, right? So that is really, really important. And you know, it takes some time to get better. It's not like you've done the surgery and patient is going to be okay. How long it take? It may take a month actually. So you can say maybe um, four to six weeks. Uh, uh, 
uh, it can take uh, for the patient to get better. That is really important, right? You might be thinking why we do CT MRI in these kind of cases. You know, sometimes what we have to do is uh, we have to be uh, very careful, like, it might be a sign by, by, because suddenly patient has got uh, vision loss, blurring of vision, curtain falling. We want to make sure there is not something uh, related to, for example, uh, uh, it's not related to, I would say, any stroke, any tumor, for example, because that's quite commonly seen there, right? So that's why we may consider doing uh, CT MRI as well. So stroke, TIA, tumors, that's why. Okay. So specific treatment is surgery, 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 guys, surgery. Yes, uh, that is uh, what I was saying, pneumatic retinopexy. So you don't need to name it for the patients. But yes, if you're using any bubble gas, I would say for the treatment as per se. So make sure we tell the patient not to fly as well. Right. DVLA reporting, of course, follow up. Yes, sudden vision loss. Uh, and it's getting worse. There's pain. Make sure you let us know. That's what you have to do. Right. IPSY, same ice is your biggest friend. Make sure you take your friend with you in the exam. Ice, ice, ice. Check and check. Give information a bit of pieces and check the understanding. Summarize. That's also very important. In the end, when you're giving your diagnosis, you can summarize it as well. Right. Acknowledge, acknowledge, acknowledge. I cannot emphasize much on this word acknowledgement. I can see you are worried. I can see you are concerned how important this line is. Body language, positive body language. It should come from inside. Yes, I'm here to help you in these eight minutes, right? So that's really important. Signposting, you understood. Active listening, you know, leaflets. And then you can give leaflets. Patient can read about it as well, right? Concern can be, will I get better? So you can acknowledge this emotion and tell the patient, yes, but it may take some time, right? Will my uh, will I get my vision back? So you know the answer for that as well. Again, acknowledge, acknowledge, acknowledge the emotions of the patient and tell the patient, yes, I mean, after the surgery, after we repair the retinal tears, you will be able to see things clearly, right? So that is what you have to do in retinal detachment. All right. Mm -hmm.